Hello guys, how are things going? I've been busy for a couple of weeks so I couldn't upload anything new to you. But today I came with a new different topic. In my last video, I uh, explained to you things I'm going to change on this channel. What are the things I'm going to add new? What are the things I'm going to change? So this is first step. Today I'm going to talk about modern JavaScript. Um, all of us like learn JavaScript one way or the other, define a variable uh, to the console out and the alert. Well, this type of thing we usually learn probably uh, while we do our degree, while we uh, do our higher studies, maybe, maybe somewhere we made JavaScript. So JavaScript is a quite popular language, but it wasn't a I mean, it wasn't evolved much. It was just like, uh, it, it was like that for years. But recently, when the mean stack came out, MongoDB, uh, Express, uh, Angular, and Node, when those things comes up, so JavaScript had uh, reasonable changes in their life cycle. So uh, JavaScript actually based on ECMA, the ECMA is the foundation and Java is on top of that. So in 2015, they made a significant release and after that, now uh, JavaScript releasing like uh, really good and really reasonable updates for every year now, right? So if you're a developer, if you're a software engineer, doesn't matter whether you're the back end or the front end or what you do, you must learn, you must know the foundation and fundamentals of JavaScript. This video, I'm not going to cover about the very fundamental, but I'm going to ch cover what are the changes introduced to JavaScript. What are we considered as a modern JavaScript, right? Okay, so here I just have a few uh, predefined examples because I don't want to uh, take your time to see like how I'm typing here. So I just have a few uh, example, but I'm going to explain you uh, as I'm, I was coding, all right? So first, I'm going to uh, explain this one, right? So if you can see, if you see this one, you can see here. So you can see here, you have a, a variable, right? It's just a small for loop, right? So if you execute this, I'm going to um, execute this for loop here. Oops. Right? So you can see here, it print zero to nine, which is as usual because it's less than ten, and uh, it say inner value is nine, the last value is ten because last value uh, get the increment, so I get the increment uh, by one, right? But k is stay nine because it's inside the loop, right? So that is not the point, right? Right. So I'm going to do a little change here. I'm going to change this var into let, right? It's it's a, a same type of keyword when you can use to uh, define variables. So now I'm going to execute the same script again. Now it tells you k is not defined, right? So see here, k is defined, but it says k is not defined. Here's the rule number one. If you use the keyword let to define variables, that means that variable is not visible outside its scope, right? In this case, like we define the variable inside the for loop. So you cannot access that variable outside the uh, for loop or outside that block. So this is very useful because when you write uh, very lengthy scripts, uh, function, multiple functions and uh, all those things, if in case if you use the same variable in other place, probably you may mix up when you're debugging, you may, you may get uh, unexpected results on runtime, but when you're debugging also, it will be really hard because maybe uh, your variable value is changing from somewhere else, right? So, but in this case, if you use a let as a keyword to define variables, then that guarantee that variable is not visible outside that block, right? Right. So there's other keyword you can use instead of a let, which is a const, right? So you can see here, like, I mean, uh, this script doesn't make any sense because every time you run the for loop, we define a new variable, right? So, um, so it doesn't make any sense. But this, for example, right, if you execute this, it will give you the same, same sort of results, right? So you can see here, so value is 10 and k, uh, k is not defined because constant let uh, work as the same, almost same way. But here's the difference, right? So here, instead of a definition, I'm going to take this up, right? So I'm going to define the variable above the for loop, right? So now what happens here, now if I try to execute this, you can say missing initializer for a uh, const declaration, right? You did say you must initialize this. I'm going to say zero, 
right? So if I execute this now, see what it tells, right? You can, it tells you, you cannot assign a value into k, right? Because it's a constant. But if you uh, add a let here, now it will work perfectly fine because we define the variable outside the scope so you can access even beyond the scope, right? So that's it. So now in the next sample, we are going to talk about the constant, right? Const definition. So you can see here the const city is Colombo, right? So if you execute, if you execute this one, so you will see print the Colombo, right? But See this one, if I try to change city equal goal, right? So now exactly as you expected, it will not allow because it's a const variable, right? But see this one, I'm going to, I'm going to do something like this, right? I'm going to create an array with the same name, right? City is an array, right? So if I print the city, uh, if I print this, it will print Gaul and Colombo, right? So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add one more value to this array, right? I'm going to add one more value to this array. So now it will print Gaul, Colombo and Gampa. The value is added, but the variable is a constant, right? So that's the rule number two. The const is only protecting a variable which is not object or arrays, right? If it is a, I mean, it's a literal values, only protect by those, right? If it is an array or if it is an object, even though it's a constant, you can change the value inside that, right? So that's a rule number two. Okay, so now let's move into the third one, right? So this is also quite interesting. So you can see here, you have a function, right? Uh, that function is uh, taking two arguments, x and y, and then it returns x into y, right? So now if I call this function, right? Okay, let me explain the entire code first, right? So that would be easy. So this is a function, it take area, it, it calculates the area. This is the function area two. It's a little bit different because it doesn't have a function keyword, but instead of that, it assign into a different uh, variable, right? So now you can see here, area to equal, the function keyword is missing, it takes same two argument, and it has implementation, arrow is connecting uh, this function and the function body, right? So this is called arrow functions, right? So the beauty of that is the third one. You can see here, you can write the function same way, but since it's a one line, you don't have to have uh, curly braces, right? You don't have to have uh, curly braces. There's other way you can write this if you want, right? So let's say area four equal, let's say you take one argument, you take only x, you're going to multiply x into x, right? So you can write even like that, right? So this is a perfectly valid statement, right? So what this tells you, you take one argument, so you don't need the parenthesis because it's a one argument, and then you multiply the same value into that, right? So I can, uh, right, I, let's let's do take this console.log a four, right, and you pass five. Okay, so let's execute this one. Okay, so you can see here the first three functions give the same result because we pass the same value, but the last one give the twenty five because it take the five and it multiply five into five right so if you take two arguments you can you can do something like this right but if it's a one argument you even do need the parenthesis right but if you want like for example let's say even the console log or something like that so you can do like this right so const right so let's say it's a five equal right so you take the x and console.log input is x, right? So this is also perfectly valid statement, right? So you can you can you can just call this one now because it's anyway it's printing. That's a five high. Right. So now if you execute this, so it will print input is a high. Right? You can write even a statement uh, in the inline 
if there is if it's only one you don't need the parenthesis so you don't need the 12 braces right cool so now we are moving to the uh, fourth one i'm going to show you the real async behavior at the uh, end of this video right what the what is the real async behavior okay so now if you take this one, so some people have a misunderstanding, that's why I added this example, misunderstanding that the function and the arrow function behave in the same way, which is not, right? So you can see here, you have a, a print uh, function here, right? So you have a print uh, variable, right, assigned. So inside that, it's an object, it's an object variable, it's inside that it has two functions, right? The function 1 and the function 2. So function 1 is a normal function, function 2 is an arrow function, right? So now I'm going to print both those functions, right? So let's see what happens. So let's see what's the difference, right? So this is example number 4, like this. So now you can see when you get a normal function, it just function, it, it printed entire function inside that, which means if you write a normal function if it is not an arrow function then this keyword is represent the caller right it represent the caller of, of the function but if you write an arrow function it does not uh, represent the caller this keyword does not represent the caller right so this is uh, some place if you check the stack overflow this is the most common confusion most developers get right so they write a uh, arrow function and they use the, this keyword and they say it doesn't give my it doesn't give me the expected output the reason is that reason is in arrow function this does not represent the caller right right so let's see how modern javascript handle objects what are the new things added to object handling in modern javascript right so you can see this is a standard object you have a key value pair object is a key value pair you have a three uh, usual key value pair and also you have a function and you have an arrow function right and you can you can see here you have a strt2 it's just a only key or only value but it doesn't have a two pairs like key value pair so what happens is if you define a variable like this if you're taking a, a variable into uh, from other module like this right so you can specify same thing here inside your object you don't have to have a value side of that right so this is same equal to this right so this is same equal to this but you don't need to this part right so that's a one the second one is right so now if you execute this uh, vehicle sqr2 it will work right so let's say something like this to print the entire vehicle so this is the fifth example so now you can see it's working right but if you enable this one this is called dynamic properties right so this is called dynamic properties if you enable this one see what happened right so it tells you the status is not there right so its status is not defined so now let's see how this works right so I'm going, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create a variable here called status, right? I'm going to assign here order condition, right? So see, this is special value, right? So see what happened here. So if I execute this, it says order condition is ready, right? It says order condition is ready. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to change this to service, right? So I'm going to change this to service. Now I'm going to execute again. Now it says service is ready, right? So what the dynamic property mean, you can have a placeholder as a key if you don't know what the key would be when in at execution time, right? If you want to have a, like, for example, you want to define a, a object to send into user through your service, but you don't know what the key would be, right? Key can be highly dynamic. You don't know at your coding time what the key would be. So you can have a placeholder like this and whatever come from the service, you can assign this variable, uh, value of the variable placeholder here and then execute, right? For example, uh, you don't know, uh, you know status is ready, but you don't know whether service status or uh, order status or the vehicle status or repair status or what right but whatever comes here assign here will apply to this and this object will uh, build with the new dynamic property right so that's also really uh, awesome feature right so now the next one is this freezing 
right so if you take this one you can see here you have obj country right so now obj dot country is sri lanka okay so now i'm going to log the object right and i'm going to set the object country is a usa and then i'm going to log the object again right so see uh, how this works right so you can see here in the first time it's a sri lanka and the second time it's a usa makes sense because we changed the value now i'm going to do is object dot freeze i'm going to freeze the object object dot freeze and i'm going to pass that obj into that right so now let's see the results now it says country is sri lanka country is sri lanka that means if you call object dot freeze then it will not change the value right it will freeze the object so no one can change it right so if you have an object where it go to service to service if you want to make sure that object doesn't change from the function to function or somewhere then uh, you can use the freeze right so then you can use the freeze keyword but that being said let me to uh, change this little bit like this right so let me change this little bit like this okay so i'm going to have this function now so here you have uh, uh, here you have a new uh, object called flower right so then uh, flower uh, has a name and it has a price now here i'm going to set the flower dot name is a rose and then flower dot price the t1 this price is the 15. so i'm going to print this right and then i'm going to uh, call the object dot freeze and i'm going to change this value the name to chrysanthemum right and t1 price into 18 right and then i'm going to print that uh, value again right so now let's see how this works now you can see it says rows price 50 right so this is the first changes we made rows 50 then we call the phrase and we set the name and we set the t1 right you can see here name didn't change but t1 change right a little weird right okay so here's the rule if you call the object dot freeze that will freeze only first level values it does not print it, it does not freeze inner level objects right second level object does not get freeze by the object dot freeze right so that's you need to carefully remember because otherwise you will expect uh, object to be freeze inter even internal uh, inner objects but uh, other people can change it okay so there are a few other things to discuss but looks like we uh, spent quite long time with this video so i think we should go for a second video uh, for talk about the modern javascript and sorry giving a false hope saying i'm going to talk about the async um, about this end of this video and um, it's not it's not a kind of a clickbait i i really mean to do that i really try to do that but uh, it took more time uh, to this video so i think it should break for the uh, other videos so then see you soon probably tomorrow in the next video uh, to talk about the rest of the modern javascript feature so then till that subscribe to my channel and stay tuned stay safe